everybody, this is Laura, City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have a layout that I made for this month's Stretch the Sketch. If you're not familiar with the Stretch the Sketch challenge, we take a sketch that was intended for a 12 by 12 inch layout and we either stretch it to a larger format or we shrink it to a smaller format. This month, the sketch was made by Rochelle Spears for Sketches in Time, and I knew as soon as I looked at it that I wanted to stretch this sketch. I thought that it would be perfect for a two-page layout, and I have quite a few photos that I would like to scrapbook, so the idea of making a two-page spread seemed like a good one. The collection I'm using is one of my favorites. It is an old collection by Basic Gray called Kanichi Wa, and I was late to the party with this collection. I saw it and I did not pick it up. And then when I tried to later on, it was very difficult to get. I was able to get a little bit of it, but I definitely don't have a ton of this collection and it's just so pretty. I don't want to hoard the collection, so I did go ahead and use it and I used quite a bit of it. But you'll see as I go through the layout, I will cut out pieces that won't be visible all around the layout so that I have enough of this collection going forward. I don't mind using it, but I didn't want to waste any. I did a lot of prep work before I started the video because it took me quite a long time to figure out how big I wanted to make each of these pieces of pattern paper. And as I said, I didn't want to waste any. I started off by cutting some orange pattern paper for the background. Then I wanted to have some blue paper on top of it. I did not have a lot of the blue paper, and since only a little would be showing on the top and the bottom, I cut out a piece of white paper and then used some strips of paper and attached those down to the white paper. Then I used a pink paper that was from my stash. It's not part of the Kanichiwa collection, but I thought it went well with the collection. And then I used that beautiful green pattern paper that you see there with the trees and the birds on it. I inked the edges of all of the papers using some Distress Ink in Vintage Photo, and then I attached them all together and then attached them down. You could see that behind the large clusters, I have cut out the paper behind it because I didn't wanna waste that paper and I do end up using a lot of it on other parts of the layout. And you could see that I made a mirror of the left-hand side on the right-hand side. I also added some pieces that serve as the banner, those red flowered pieces. I really like that pattern paper. I don't have any more of that, I don't think. I certainly didn't have any more smaller pieces of it. So I was very careful to cut those just the way I wanted them. And then with the little scraps that were left over, I made some photo corners. Somehow I didn't realize that only a little border of the orange paper would be showing in the back. So I do cut that paper off so that I could save it. So you could see the border of the orange paper, but they're not large pieces of paper anymore. Off camera, I just cut off whatever wasn't visible. I have my four photos and I have them mounted on some white cardstock and I didn't ink the edges of them. So I was thinking that it would probably be best to add a little bit of the Distress ink to the edges. And so I already attached down the photos, but I went back and I just added a little tiny bit of the Distress ink, just whatever was left on the dauber. And then I added those photo corners down. The edges of those are inked with the same Distress ink. These photos are for my younger daughter, Julia's album. I have been trying to complete an album from 2015 for quite a while now. And we went to a Japanese market called Mitsua. They have a supermarket, they have a kind of food court area, and they also have some stores. We picked up some items that we don't find locally, such as certain types of miso that we like to make miso soup with. And then my daughter, Julia, loves, loves, loves all of the candy and the ice cream. They have some really cool things that are hard to find where we live. So we made a little trip out of it. We got our groceries and then we ate in the food court as well. And then we got some ice cream. I believe that I had the bean curd ice cream. I absolutely love that. It's delicious. I wanted to include the circular element that's in the sketch. So I cut a half circle out of two different pattern papers. I laid them on top of each other and I put that on the left-hand side 
of the layout and then I continued to follow along with the sketch and I made a tag for the upper right hand corner. I just used some of that same paper that I used for the background paper and another little scrap of that red flowered paper and I used a We Are Memory Keepers punch and I punched a little circle to go around the opening in the tag. To make the hole in the tag, I used my eyelet setter. That is a tool that goes way back, but the hole wasn't quite large enough. So then I used my scissors and I made it just a little bit bigger. Then I glued the We Are Memory Keepers punched out circle onto the tag. And I was thinking the tag looked a little lonely because now that it's a two page spread, I feel that it doesn't quite take up that space, but I'll go back to that in a little while. I had the matching brads for the Kanichiwa collection. I chose two of them. Those are those old fashioned brads where you have to poke the hole in the paper to put them through. I also had some of the chipboard. So I put a piece of chipboard that says date on it on the top of the first photo. And then a little sentiment that says spring fever underneath the second photo. And then I added two more sentiments, but I do end up taking those off later. So the title of my layout is going to be Mitsua Fun. I used a set of letter dies that I had in my stash and I'm pretty sure I got these from AliExpress and they are a little wonky. Most of the letters are really nice, but some of them are a little bit smaller than the others. So you could see the A on this word is a little bit smaller than the other letters. And even though they're a little weird, I still really like them and I do use them every now and then. So I cut out three sets of white letters and then I cut one set of brown letters that's using some brown cardstock. And then I use some pattern paper for the top layer. And I slightly offset the pattern paper so that you could see a little bit of the brown behind it and that helps the letters stand out and make them a little bit more visible on the layout. Once again, I'm sticking very closely to the sketch. I have my title in the lower right hand corner, but because the title is large and rather long, I had to put some of it on the left hand page. I spread out the letters and began attaching them down. I put the eye on first because I wanted to make sure it was spaced correctly from the edge of the paper. It wasn't until I had already placed down the M and the I that I was thinking I should ink the edges just a little bit with some of the Distress ink. And I just picked them up off the page and used whatever ink was left on the dauber to ink the edges. Now I have the title in place and then I started thinking about that upper right hand corner again and I thought it would be nice to have another tag. So I just created another tag. It's the same as the tag that's already there, I just use a different pattern paper on the top. I removed the larger sentiments that I had above and below the photos on the right hand page of the layout. I replaced one of the sentiments with a sentiment that says something to tweet about and then the other one says good times. I like the size of those sentiments a little bit better. I thought that they went along a little bit better with the other embellishments on the page. I fussy cut some of these absolutely gorgeous flowers from one of the pattern papers. I only have one of this piece of paper and it's so beautiful. The flowers on it are so, so nice. If I had more of it, there would have been a lot more of these flowers on my layout. I absolutely love them. I had a couple of tiny chipboard flowers that went with the collection and I moved them around a little bit on the layout. I ended up just putting a couple near the flowers on the upper left hand corner and then I also put a flower in between the two words of the title. I had a couple of other flowers that I fussy cut out from various scraps of the pattern paper. So I put a couple up by the tags and then a few down by that half circle that's on the bottom of the page. I used some fun foam and I popped up a couple of the flowers on the layout just to give them just a small bit of dimension. This isn't a super dimensional layout. I think it's really interesting how the basic gray collections are so different from the collections of today. Back then there were pattern papers and then there were some embellishments, but nothing like the embellishments that are available today. 
but still I feel like I can make some of my favorite pages using these basic gray papers, even with the limited number of embellishments that are available. These basic gray collections really highlight for me that beautiful pattern papers are just so important to a layout. They're really key for me. And while I love some of the new manufacturers and products, there's just nothing like basic gray. There's just something really unique about those collections. I wanted to add another embellishment to the page. So I found that I had these beautiful cherry blossom branches in my stash. These are from Paper Studio. I just had one pack of the stickers and I ended up using all of them. I put some in the different clusters that are on the page, some in the flower clusters. I put some near the title and then some up by the tags as well. And I think that this was something that the layout really needed. It needed something that was a little bit smaller in scale to even out all of those elements that are on a little bit larger scale. I decided to just use a black pen to write in the date. I was a little afraid to use my date stamp. I didn't want to make a mistake because I don't have another chipboard piece to go there. And then I was thinking the tags would look nice with some string on them. I decided to tie them into bows. I used a brown and tan twine on the left-hand side and an off-white twine on the right-hand tag. I spent a little time trying to get those bows just right, and then I cut the excess string off of each of the tags. I used the smallest size red enamel dot that I had, and I put one on each of the photo corners that are on the layout. I decided to use all red enamel dots because I had all red photo corners. I also added some enamel dots to those tiny flowers, the chipboard ones that I have scattered around the layout. Once I had all of those enamel dots placed down on the layout, I was thinking for a little while that the layout was complete. But then as I kept looking at it, I was thinking that I could use something above the photos. I picked out a Fisker's border punch. I liked the way there were two different size circles in the punch and I punched out a border strip from the same paper that I used in the background. I inked the edge of the strip with a little bit of the distress ink that I used on the rest of the layout and then I put some adhesive on the back of it and I placed the strips on the layout. And I'm glad that I added that strip. I think it adds a nice little detail to that area of blue pattern paper. That completes this layout and here are some close-ups. Thank you so much to Janet Fritz, who for many years has been coordinating this awesome hop. I truly think of this as a challenge. I love participating in Stretch the Sketch. There are always so many wonderful scrapbookers who take part in Stretch the Sketch. The links to their videos will be in the description box. And I also want to say thank you so much to you for taking your time to watch this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.